Well, by now we have seen three estimates, which is analog, which is top down, parametric, and a bottom up. We have discussed their advantage, disadvantages, when you should be using it, why you should be using it, what kind of uh, the estimation those will give. Now, taking a step little further from a bottom up estimation, which, which is not considering the risk and uncertainty which is, we, which is in the future, is a three point estimate. So the idea is as a human nature we are bad at estimation, as a human nature we want to be safe. So when somebody will ask us the timeline of or duration of a delivery of a task as a natural human uh, instinct, we will put up a little bit of padding, a little of unreasonable padding. This to cover this un, that unreasonable, unreasonable part of your padding, PERTs come in. Because PERT will go into each activity level and will identify the uncertainty and the risk that could jeopardize this specific activity or that could hit this specific activity and would identify all the possible reasons and all your assumptions that could be risk the, on this activity that it could go wrong. So we have three estimates for every activity and again obviously when you are working in bottom up, bottom up is very expensive, time taking, you need planning, you need information and the same is the situation with the PERT. You uh, garbage in garbage out, you have to plan well, you have to have a good information to identify to work on this PERT analysis, uh, PERT review uh, technique. So now we have most likely. Most likely is a timeline estimate that you are saying that yes, we are, we are planned for this and we will deliver it without much risk and without any party time extra. So this is the most likely. Usually in the evenings, highways are congested. We know that. Maybe in the daytime, a, a travel of 8 minutes in the evening becomes 40 minutes. This is most likely. But even a congested highway, you would not consider a risk of accident. That is your pessimistic approach. That what could go wrong? The worst case scenario. You know, obviously, the worst case scenario does not mean that you are expect you are in a most likely case saying five, and then in a worst case you are saying fifty. No, you need to identify all your assumptions, all the risk or uncertainty that could go wrong on this pro on this activity so then it will come as a pessimistic and then an obviously the uh, fastest possible time or the optimistic uh, estimate is which we you say that yes usually highways are congested at 5 and you just leave at 4:30 and 4:45 and you bypass all this rush and the time so this is the more fastest possible time it is when you open the laptop you want to do a presentation and then it is like everything is coming in your mind or you keep on doing it and it is done in fastest possible time and you are happy with your output. So this is how the most likely optimistic and the pessimistic uh, uh, estimates are identified. When we will work on these estimates in a two possible ways we will have the calculated buffer, not unreasonable, unprovable uh, buffers, but reasonable calculated buffers which will identify based on the risk that you have already identified that this activity could go wrong because of these risks. And then somebody will take those risks and they will discuss and they will identify the mitigation plan or the risk response, whatever. But the point is you are actually making sure that you have a contingency reserves based on every activity. This is a general introduction for the PERT. Next we will see how we are going to use it and where it is referenced in our PM book 6. Thank you very much for your time.